we've been able to identify people in the general population who have uh, the first steps in how the blood starts to become abnormal uh, and they have a high risk of progressing to leukemia within the next 10 years. We, we developed a gene sequencing tool that captured uh, the most common 260 uh, genes that get altered in AML. And we basically sequenced the whole 500 samples, right? So we had a blood sample taken on enrollment, and we asked, can we find any leukemia genes in the blood of people who were normal? Uh, and is there a difference between those who we know went on and got leukemia at some point and those who never got leukemia? And the answer is that we did. These people are completely normal, but they are picking up the seeds of these mutations in their blood. Their blood stem cells are expanding, and that we can predict with very high accuracy uh, as, a, as a predictor of progressing to leukemia sometime within the next you know, six to ten years. So AML is obviously a devastating disease, so the uh, mortality rates exceed 90% if it's been diagnosed, for example, after the age of 65. So obviously, tools that will help us to identify or to detect this uh, disease earlier might be beneficial. And uh, for us, the, 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 the beauty of this work is that um, it, it raises a whole bunch of implications in terms of actually making this something practical that could actually be brought forward uh, into future uh, testing. I'm John Dick, and I'm a senior scientist in the Princess Margaret Cancer Center. I'm uh, Sagi Abelson. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in John Dick's lab at Princess Margaret Cancer Center.